Welcome, this is Rufamonger, and this is my choose a main guide to help you decide what character you would like to play in DNF Duel. DNF Duel's got a pretty diverse roster. Uh, pretty much every archetype of character you could want, you can find here. From, you know, puppet characters, to traditional big boys, to crazy hardcore zoning, to just, you know, plain old honest rushdown, everything is here. Now, a few things to note before we get into it. Yes, I'll cover every character. Everything will be timestamped. So if you want to skip to a specific character, use the timestamps below. So just a couple quick things to mention. Things like passives for every character. I'm not going to mention every single character's passive. I will only bring it up where I think it's really applicable, where it changes how the character wants to play, either via their game plan or if it like, gives them new properties. Otherwise, most of the passives just kind of let them do their normal game plan, but better. Also, if I say a character has good range, everyone in this game has good range, okay? By normal fighting game standards, everyone's ranges are fantastic. So if I say they have good range, I mean they have really good range. Also, just as a note, uh, this game, the power levels are turned up to 11. Like every archetype you can find here uh, is basically a lot stronger than you would find in a normal fighting game. Like most normal fighting games, would not let characters, frankly, be this strong. So for some, that might be a turn off. For me, I think that's uh, great, actually. It's one of my favorite points of the game. Every character feels like the boss version of whatever archetype they represent. Even the humble grappler, right? Like, I think this is one of the coolest grapplers in the history of fighting games. So everyone is a turbocharged version of whatever playstyle they represent. So just keep that in mind. That said now, let's start and let's talk about the characters. So let's start with the Striker. The Striker is your classic rushdown style of character and pretty easy to understand. Very fast, a lot of just easy bake offense, like her lights is basically an infinite chain. And besides that, she has a lot of unique properties. Like for one, her jumping heavy is just an honest to God dive kick, right? And depending if you can hit counter hit, it can also go into full combo. So that's really handy. So if she has a dive kick as a basic normal, how crazy do things get with her? Well, it turns out pretty crazy. Uh, one of the things about this game is she has reverse beat. So a lot of characters can go into light attack, into a medium attack, into a heavy attack. And she's much the same, right? So she can go LMH. That's fine. But she can also go heavy, into a medium, into a light. It doesn't matter for her. She can go into uh, any attack, into any chain at all. And a lot of characters, they can do, say, a standing normal into a crouching normal but not so much the other way around, right? You can do uh, this, but you can't do that. Well, except for the fact she obviously can do that, right? So her combo freedom, her pressure freedom, and like just the freedom to hit buttons in general is well above every other character in the game for the most part. Whatever order you want to hit buttons in, however you want to do things, you have complete freedom to do that with the striker. Another big thing about the character, on top of having just complete freedom to do attacks in any order she wants, unlike other characters, she can also chain up all her special moves together freely. So she can go like neutral special into quarter circle forward special, and it just works. For the most part, the rest of the cast can't do things like that, and she can kind of just chain things together as, as long as she has a meter to do it, as long as she has enough mana to do it, she can infinitely chain things together. So if she was ever in the situation to have just a lot of extra mana lying around, she can just kind of chain things together freely till the juice runs out. So as far as offense goes, the only thing limiting your pressure and your combo structure is just your own imagination, because everything works in everything for the most part. She has total freedom in a way that other characters just don't have in this game. And don't get me wrong, the other characters aren't limited. Certainly not, right? It's just she has even more freedom than them. Now, besides that, a couple things to note. Uh, she is, you know, a basic rushdown character. She wants to get in. And this game is not like modern fighters where fireballs are pretty weak. There's a lot of strong zoning in this game. Thankfully, her quarter circle forward special, their shoulder charge, has fireball immunity all the way through. And if it does hit as a counter hit, it does become a wall splat. So you can really turn the tables if you're closer to the corner and just get full combos. That's great. Also, for people who are just, you know, a bit too passive and all that, she has ways to steal turns. She has removed the one inch punch and the one inch punch is plus on block. As you can see there, the enemy that's doing it to me, she is the one jumping first. So if you get someone who's just a bit too passive, 
You can go for the one inch punch and then just continue your offense because if they hit a button, you're always going to go first. And if it actually connects, that's even better because it's a crumple state and you can do whatever you want from there. Free combos. So yeah, she's straightforward rushdown. Pretty simple. But if you like basic rushdown, just attack, 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 attack. She's really good at it. Once again, her freedom to do anything is great. Like even her basic heavies, every heavy goes into every heavy. So like normal heavy goes into back heavy, goes in forward heavy, forward heavy goes in back heavy and into normal heavy. Everything chains together. And of course, naturally too, the heavies also go into mediums and lights because that's how reverse beat works. So yeah, just nonstop rush down, total freedom to do whatever you want to do. Now on the opposite end of the striker, we have the grappler. Now the grappler, despite the fact he's not the biggest character in the game, might just be the slowest character in the game. So that speed and freedom that we mentioned about the striker, grappler, not so much. Now the grappler's game plan, like, now I don't want to be too on the nose or nothing, but it's about dunking you. It's about grabbing you. That's kind of the thing he does. And he's got a lot of ways to do it. He has a command grab naturally enough and heck even his basic heavy attack is also a command grab like it'll grab you no matter what uh he does have the freedom and combos to grab you while doing combos depending on the move that's good and one of the biggest things about this character is everything can be held specifically everything that's a heavy and every single special move can be held so what am i talking about here well here's forward and heavy which is a good enough strike if he hits, easy hit, confirm, grab, go from there, right? But you can also charge it. And the charge version does more damage, allows for bigger follow-ups, like that grab. And heck, that grab, I charged the grab. The charge move is slower for sure, but let's look. This basic command grab here, this cortical back and special, the magic button, 200, the held version, 280. So that's a pretty sizable damage buff. Consider a basic throw in this game does 150 damage, right? So that's something. But yeah, grabs the name of the game. No matter what, uh, he's going to be grabbing you. He's going to get damage. This is how it's going to work. Watch out because this dude's going to chuck you now. If it was just the grabs, right? Then whatever. But the thing is, he's got a lot more than that. How about a hell of a lot of armor? The grappler's standing heavy, the grab, and his crouching heavy both have armor. So if the enemy is just, you know, kind of swinging for the fences. So if the enemy is just kind of swinging for the fences, you can just bust through it. And you see there, he took both hits. It's not just a single hit. He actually has three hits of armor while doing this. So he can just bulldog his way in. And, you know, sure enough, right? Like, if I get you. You know, you're not necessarily in for good times. Uh, it could be something like that. The kick as well. The kick also has three hits of armor, and it launches you, and you can jump cancel it. So, like, you can definitely get some hits in, right? And that's the beauty here. He actually has one more move with armor, and that is his held version, because once again, all of his specials and heavies can be held. The held version of forward and magic, the shoulder. So, so if you hold it, also has armor and just blows the enemy away. The thing about this move specifically is special. If you hold it, it's armored, that's great. But it is also invincible to projectiles. So if the enemy is trying to zone you out, you know, naturally this archetype of character, he's slow, he wants to grab you, he wants to get in. This is your get out of jail move that he can just kind of bypass all the fireballs very easily. Another thing with the grappler has a lot of easy sources of plus on block frames. Like just something as basic as forward heavy punch, this move right here. This move is indeed plus on block. So if you block it, it's his turn. So if you try to mash out, you're going to get full comboed. And if you try to stay still, you're going to get grabbed. So, you know, it's the kind of situation a grappler character likes to put you in. Other moves as well, the held version of his uh, flip stomp, also plus on block. And also, if he's losing on the ground, you know, because a lot more characters have better range than him. This is kind of like the, I don't want to play neutral. I'm just going to fling myself in kind of move. He gets a combo on hit, plus on block if it's blocked, what's not to love? Now, one thing to note, he's actually exceptionally weak to low attacks. All those armored moves we talked about and we showed there, none of them work against lows, only against standing and jumping attacks. So if someone's tossing out lows, none of those gimmicks are going to work. You have to start either beating them normally or beat them in the air. Thank now, thankfully, you know, 
You can actually uh, attack very low to the ground, very quick off a jump. And if you want to do the held version of heavy in the air, because once again, all heavies, all special moves can be held. It ground bounces very plus on block, right? And you can just kind of go for whatever, right? Like, so he has options, right? But just keep in mind, he's very weak against lows. And just to uh, finish up, I guess, just to mention, he truly is the king of command grabs in this game. He is not the only character with command grabs. There are a few others, but his command grabs specifically are throw invincible. So if you try to throw him, his throw cannot be thrown. So if you know that's an option, yours will always win. Just to end up, uh, I'm uh, known for playing grappler characters in fighting games over the years. And I do have to say the grappler, well named in this game, is one of my favorite versions of any grappler I've seen in any fighting game. He's a joy to play. Like most fighting games, he'll probably be low tier in the end. That's fine. But if you just want to grab people and do, you know, big boy things, this character is awesome at it. Now the Hitman, stylistically, you know, pretty interesting because he's fighting with a katana and an Uzi. That's not really something you see a lot, right? So that's cool in and of itself. Now, one of the things here is a lot of his moves have very active frames, like they're out there for a very long time because they utilize the swords and the guns, right? So this is, I guess you could say both a positive and a negative. Or things like hit confirms. Did it hit or not? Turns out you got a hot minute to tell if you got your combos or not, and you can just do whatever from there. But if you whiff, you're kind of stuck in that animation for a little bit. So keep in mind. But even stuff like his light light, he swings the Uzi, shooting a lot of bullets. Just so easy to hit confirm. Like, if you're the kind of person who has a little bit of difficulty visually assessing if you have the hit or not, this is the character for you because his moves are just out there for a long time. Now, besides all that, just the normals are good. He has a big overhead chop. That's also an OTG, so it can hit grounded at opponents. Just easy launchers. Just good range on a lot of stuff, as you saw there. Uh, he can get in trivially, like forward heavy, just goes in. And of course, easy hit confirms, right? Oh, did it hit? Cool combo time. Go from there. He has very easy pressure, because not only do you can tell, you know, okay, if I got the hit, I can go for a combo. Things like forward and magic. This guy right here. It's already good enough as it stands, but it's also very slight advantage on block. So if you're getting blocked, you can just kind of do this and you have just a couple frames of advantage over the enemy. So you can keep your offense going. So anytime you're like, oh, I'm getting blocked, whatever, just go for it, reset and dare the enemy to try to hit a button. And of course, once they sit there, then you just quick run for grab that kind of stuff. Just very easy pressure. Good normals, good pressure, good combos, easy stuff like stuff like stand uh, magic just as neutral magic huge range like he's a threat most everywhere on the screen except for like the exact edge of the corner because despite having a gun he doesn't really shoot it for zoning purposes also his awakening pass is somewhat unique as it actually unlocks his potential in that his magic attacks get new follow-ups so all you have to do is when you're doing like any given magic attack just hit the magic attack again and you'll see like those shadow versions of the character show up and it gives you follow-ups and that follow-up, it'll like cause a crumple state and you can actually combo from it. So his damage potential wildly goes up when he has his passive up in Awakening because he has that new follow-up and he can get well follow-ups from the follow-up attack. So in the end, I do think he's actually one of the easier characters to just kind of pick up and learn. Uh, his basic stuff is just kind of forgiving. Like maybe it'll take a little bit to get you know, optimal with him as it were, but Combos are easy, easy plus frames. Uh, if you're losing that passive, the fact that, you know, it gives you, you know, new moves to work with, like that was a launcher, right? Uh, just really solid all around. I think a solid beginner character. Now the Berserker, uh, coming off the Hitman, I said Hitman's probably one of the better beginner characters. You would think on paper, the Berserker is a good beginner character, but he's actually a bit more complex than the rest of the cast. So we'll get to that in a second. Let's talk some of the basics first. So the basics are the buttons are pretty decent. Uh, you got some uh, good range, like sand, uh, medium here, as you see, it's a very solid poke. Got some interesting gimmicks here, like the Gore Cross. So the Gore Cross is this big double slash. And if you just let it rock in and of itself, it's an active hitbox and he recovers before it's done. So he can kind of hide behind it like a shield. But if you hit the button again, he tosses it like a projectile, right? So he has, basic zoning i wouldn't say this is one of the better fireballs because 
It's very telegraphed, right? But you can either let it rock and be like a bit of a shield that eats up part of the screen or a projectile. That's good. Besides that, back heavy is just like a interesting thing because it's like a low crush. So if the enemy is doing like a lot of lows and you know it's coming, you can literally just hop over it and just bonk them on the head. So that's good, you know, a counterplay device. But the main event here, the reason you would pick this character is his neutral special, which is Frenzy. So just like a Dungeons and Dragons Barbarian. Like if you go crazy in the Frenzy, you start taking a penalty and penalty here, as you can see, is I'm constantly draining my gray life here. So I'm losing life while I'm in a Frenzy. But while you're in a Frenzy, things get better for you because your offense gets a lot better. Stuff like just basic light attack. You can see here, it's now a double hitter, right? He's got another sword. So when I'm not in the Berserk state here, the Frenzy, like that's not how it works. But when I am, my moves become multi-hitting. I got better chains. Like that's just stand medium right there, right? That's a knockdown. When you're in a normal state, that's all you get. Frenzy though, gets a lot more pronounced for sure. So your offense potential is going up. You also get access to a new special move while you're in Frenzy. So if you hit neutral special again, you get this like blood tornado that just sucks in the enemy. And as you see, the range is pretty extreme. It's bouncing off the enemy like it ain't nothing. It's a pretty wild attack. So you have access to this attack too, although it ends the frenzy. Uh, and a couple things here too. Uh, if you are in the frenzy, getting hit ends the frenzy. Also doing a conversion ends the frenzy. And that's the true power of this. That is the true power of this. Because when you're berserk here, you can do whatever attacks. That's great. And during any point, because the great health is always draining, Oh, you can just convert and keep your offense going. So quick example here. Oh, if I get the hit, basic example. But if I get the hit, I can like do more combo follow-ups, right? The fact that when I have the Berserk up, you can immediately convert immediately, like even a single gray health, right? If you do it, you can convert on the spot. So it gives you the ability on top of your enhanced offense to do the conversion, like the Roman cancel, if you will, whenever you want on the spot. If they're blocking, you go crazy and do it. Uh, if you get the hit, you go combo out. Like it allows for such an incredible turbocharged offense. It's absolutely insane. That's where the real advanced play of the Berserker comes in. So besides all that, a few things to note here. He does have a command grab. So of course, go back special, it's command grab. And it actually refills all your gray health. So if you're going uh, you know, heavy into your frenzy and you don't necessarily want to do a conversion, if you're looking to get that health back, this guy gets all your great health back, so that's really handy. He has access to very easy plus frames, like his Ford special leaves him very plus on block. Uh, heck, even his uh, jump special, actually. This move right here, also quite plus on block. Like if I block it, see here, the enemy, they jump first, so it's still their turn. So. Good normals, easy plus frames with the frenzy state, just so much damage potential from just doing more damage and then canceling whatever you're doing into conversions, into more combos, pressures, this, that, and the other. He's an offensive dynamo for sure. He's also a character with a pretty important passive when he's in awakening state. When he has his passive up, all of his attacks gain health. And it's like a non-trivial amount. You actually get a fair bit of health back. Like, this is actually something you want to aim for. Like, look at that. Just a couple hits in, and we double our health guard, uh, gauge, right? So he has the ability to make a pretty sizable comeback uh, with his health. And, of course, once you have more health, screw it. Burning it into Frenzy, right? And then go into cancels and, like, all that kind of stuff. So the health is very much a resource for this character. Uh, if you are looking to play, like, you know, ride the lightning, living on the edge style, this is absolutely the character for you. Now, let's talk the Ranger. So the Ranger is the game's dedicated zoner, I guess you could say. Well, one of them. And how much of a zoner is he? Well, let's, uh, let's take our light attack. Our light attack is a full screen projectile. And we can chain it too. That's a three hit combo from full screen, right? Our medium? Oh, you better believe that's also a full screen projectile. Our heavy? Well, actually, that's a kick. It's uh, actually kind of a Benimaru style of kick from King of Fighters, but yeah. So a lot of his basic normals, like jumping light, jumping medium, like even these are projectiles before we get to like the actual meat of it. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is a character to like lose your friends to, because this character can beat you from full screen and it's gonna frustrate people. 
So a couple things here besides uh, the basic, you know, fireballs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, jump heavy is a grenade, and it's like a delayed explosion. So he can do whatever he wants to do once the grenade's out. It's effectively just another layer of threat. You toss it, and then you just keep attacking, keep attacking. And if it's a little bit near them, you can have the threat of, like, I'm going to get closer and closer and go from there. And, of course, naturally, you can combo from it as well. Despite these things as well, he has a surprising amount of mobility. Uh, like, his forward magic just kind of flings him across the screen. So if you're just anywhere near the corner, you can say, nah, get out of dodge. He also has a slide attack, which low profiles himself. So he can go underneath quite a bit. And that slide, as you can see, that launches. So, like, you can actually... Get follow-ups depending on uh, your distance and your recovery, as you can see there. And then you just get to the stupid stuff, right? So, like, he has this uh, big shot. And the big shot, despite being a gunshot, actually is not quite full screen. It's just mostly full screen. But the thing is, it chains into itself three times. So, like, if you're talking, like, hit confirms, he's got some of the easiest hit confirms in the game. Besides all that, he has Gunnerang. That he tosses out these guns. They shoot... And then they explode. So it's a big active hitbox, right? So it owns that part of the screen. And God forbid it actually connects. On hit or on block, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Better on hit, sure. But the thing is, he recovers, like, right away after it. So once he tosses this out, he can very freely just follow up. Like, just run in, pressure, just do whatever he wants to do. Uh, it's an oppressive move, and that's why the mana cost is very high for it. Not too much, really, to say besides that. Just, he has all sorts of gun attacks. He's going to be very frustrating. has a lot of range. He's difficult to get into uh, between, you know, tossing grenades, boomerang guns, all that kind of stuff. His ability to control the screen is very high. So if you're just looking to fight out of range and frustrate people, this is the character. Now, the Crusader, are you a fan of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? But you wish you could play Jesus Christ in a video game and have him take a hammer and cave someone's skull in from 75% of the screen. Well, that's the Crusader in a nutshell. So he is the big boy archetype in that he's not necessarily a grappler. Big boys and grapplers aren't necessarily one of the same. Yeah, he has nothing like a command grab. He has a really cool regular throw where he puts you up against the crucifix and busts you through it. That's kind of sick, right? But what he is, is big guy, big normals. Uh, his ability to control the screen is really good because he's a threat with big normals. He has built-in uh, projectiles. This is just forward and heavy, right? It's very big, nice and slow. Like, he can follow behind it, control a lot of the screen. If you want something fast, jump special is a wicked quick projectile. Like, very difficult to react to. Uh, incredibly aggressive angle wide area of effect explosion like you don't necessarily have to even be accurate it can still like explode and hit people on the ground at their feet so his presence on the screen is very good no matter where he is is what i'm trying to say now besides that he gets to take away your presence on the screen because uh perhaps the most unique feature of the character is the wall so he creates a new end of the stage basically this is the wall you cannot progress past this point till it goes away so Say this is an unlikely situation, but say I'm right here, right? And I hit the wall. This is it. This is all the stage we get to play in. Like, the enemy, they can't go past this. There's no jumping over it. There's no backdashing through it. There's no nothing. The wall is the new end of the stage. So suffice to say, this leads to a lot of pressure. But the beauty is, this being a special move, this also combos into a lot of stuff, right? So I can hit you very far away with my incredibly far range moves, and immediately... Cancel into the wall and just get combos and that kind of stuff from there. So my ability to combo you from full screen is also very high thanks to the wall. And just one little special thing, I would feel remiss if I didn't mention it. Uh, stuff like uh, down heavy, all of his normals are very big, but down heavy is also very big. Uh, it actually can double hit with weird angles uh, thanks to the wall. You got to time it correctly right there, but right there you see it was two hits. So the wall allows for uh, certain moves to hit in ways that they normally couldn't. One thing, being a bigger character, you would expect he'd get bullied by fireballs a lot. And he does. He does. But he does have a move here, his neutral special. Uh, a bit later into the move, once he starts charging, he's actually invincible to fireballs. So if you can, like, raw call out the fireball, then you can just kind of charge past it and blast the enemy. Otherwise, you got to do, you know, kind of the old walk and block, right? But that's life for big characters. 
He also has a counter attack that's just back heavy. Uh, once again, big moves, yes, but moves are slow. So in a situation where the enemy's directly on top of you, even your fastest stuff really won't be fast enough to beat them. So, well, that's why he has the counter. Now, one thing to note, just like some other counters in the game, doesn't stop lows. So if the enemy is going low on you, you just got to block. But otherwise, this is an option, thankfully, for just, you know, people are just trying to overwhelm you to say, like, get off me. I'm going to counter you. And the final thing to mention about him is the grace of Lamedios. This is where, like, stuff gets real. This is when the boss mode activates. There are some penalties here in that if you let it run to its natural conclusion, he kind of, as I saw, was, like, exhausted. Not exhausted in, like, the sense where you lose mana, but he just goes, ugh. And you can't control the character during that point. And it's basically a free combo. Now, thankfully, you don't want to let it get to that point. So one of the big things here is he has super armor while this is up. That's kind of a big deal. I can just walk through it. But only a single hit of super armor, as you can see there, right? It's not forever. So you burn the one hit. That's kind of it for you, right? But still, you can just literally walk through a single move. The thing is, when you're in this state, it actually unlocks two brand new moves. We have this guy here. Of course, go back in special. It's the big hammer slam. And the thing is, it puts the shock state on the enemy. And the shock state means the enemy can't jump. So the enemy crusader is going to hit me here. And now try as I might. You can look at my inputs. I'm mashing up. I cannot jump up at all while I have the shock state up. So it controls your movement effectively. An enemy that can't jump, you know, is a lot less dangerous. Another way to burn it is to do it same motion in the air. And it sets basically this big laser show up. And as you tell, that's pretty good, right? That's why it's kind of delayed. And unfortunately, if you do get hit, it'll go away. So you do kind of have to baby it because, uh, you know, you spend a lot of mana on it, right? But yeah, so it's a very powerful state, gives you a hit of super armor and lets you have two very powerful finishing moves. So all in all, the Crusader, he's pretty straightforward. He's not tricking you, right? Like he's not hitting you with the overhead low, left, right mix ups or stuff like that. He's just got a big hammer and he's going to beat your friggin' brains in. The Troubleshooter. So big thing here, he's definitely a character with above average range. Like this is just stand medium, right? Like that's hitting from a good while away, right? And on top of that, it's just, you know, the button. If you want to use the shotgun as a special move, don't worry. It's got the range as well. So his ability to fight at most parts of the screen, not quite full screen, but like, you know, 95% of the screen is pretty good. Now, one of the big things here is uh, the drink. So back heavy, let him drink. You don't want to drink too much because you notice here uh, it's doing gray health damage, but it actually gives you a damage buff. So say just medium, right? Does 80 damage. We take our drink, 104 damage. Stand heavy, 106 damage. Take a drink, 137 damage. So like, it's a significant damage buff. It is not nothing, right? And the most important thing Besides the damage, well, it gives you gray health. It's doing damage to you, and that's a good thing. Because now on top of you doing more damage yourself, since I have gray health, I can do my conversion canceling. And that means you do more damage, and then you're going to do more damage on top of your more damage because you're conversion canceling and doing bigger and more wild combos. Or you drink, and then you go pressure time, right? Like, what are they doing here? If I get my hit, sure, I can go into my conversion because I have great health to work with. And if not, I'll do something. They block it. Uh, I'll convert. I'm advantage on block. I've gained more mana back. I can keep more pressure going. And yeah, so it just makes you better across the board. More damage, more opportunities. Very strong. Besides that, stuff like his basic neutral special is a Rekka series. Has, you know, three total attacks. And you can delay them. You could just not do the follow-up. Like, it's actually just quite strong that way, right? It's the mind game. Am I going to go for all three? Uh, am I going to slightly delay? Or am I just going to do one and try to run up and throw you? Like, that kind of stuff, right? Very good. Also, you saw that throw there, a bit of explosives. He's keen on the explosives. Stuff like Fort Heavy is like just a grenade toss. His Jump Heavy is grenade tosses. They all launch. So very easy to get combos from it. Very strong. Not really ignorant stuff. Like jump special is like a helm splitter, basically. And as you can see, it launches. So, you know, combo time, right? And it's also plus on block. So the enemy doing it to me, they're jumping first. That means they have the advantage. 
So full combo on hit and plus on block is exactly my kind of stupid, you know? Like it's all upside. It's literally all upside. Besides that, uh, back special, it'll shoot you and he tosses this explosive net. And it just sits there and well, it explodes, right? But the thing is you can actually detonate it early. If you go up to it and hit light punch, where he shoots a shotgun on the ground, it goes off early. And now it becomes a little bit of a guessing game, right? If the enemy wakes up into it, do I wait it out? Am I gonna try to trigger it early? And all the mind games that come with it, basically. So basically the troubleshooter is a big brute. Like he goes in, huge normals, lots of space control. Uh, the fact that he can like toss the net and you know, uh, control your wake up a little bit. The fact that he's gonna drink himself to death, get all sorts of conversion cancels, more damage, more mana, has the damn, like, if you just like bullying people, this seems like the dude for it. Now the Dragon Knight. So the Dragon Knight, well, you might notice she's about something in particular. And well, it's the dragon. The dragon's the reason you show up to the event. And your little dragon buddy, well, you can use him. And not only can you use him, he has a couple different moves. He has uh, some fun gimmicks. Cause he can attack you and keep throwing fireballs. He can attack you and throw some really big fireballs or just be kind of annoying all around and like pressure you with like flame loop gimmicks, all that kind of stuff. So you can use the dragon while you're fighting. And of course there's a lot more to that because you can become the dragon. You can fly as the dragon knight. Now it does drain your mana. So realistically, you're not going to be flying all the time. The fly is just for more. Well, let's just call it for what it is like mix up some pressure. So I could say hit you with jump medium and cancel that in the fly. And I can cancel my fly into another attack. So I can hit you, jump medium, fly, jump medium. And now that's a double overhead. Or I could jump medium, fly, light medium, and that's a triple overhead, right? Basically a lot of fun little gimmicks. And you know what? There are the gimmicks, but the Dragon Knight does not have to play the gimmicks because the Dragon Knight is very fundamentally sound here. Stuff like uh, stand heavy is already good, but you can hold stand heavy and get some good range and a wall bounce, right? So you can just play that fundamentals game. It's been a good solid fundamental game here. Four special has a lot of range. Uh, jump heavy is like an Akuma style fireball, angled downwards fireball. Very oppressive, very good range. So if you want to pressure with the dragon, like do gimmicks, fly cancel gimmicks, all that kind of stuff, you can. But if you want to play a solid game as well, that is also an option on the table. And also parts of the dragon knight are just straight up unfair and cheap. Like say uh, we have the dragon, the follow-up here where he just tosses a lot of fireballs, right? The thing about this, how this would work in like every other fighting game is once the fireballs start getting tossed here, if I were to hit the Dragon Knight, right? The dragon would go away, but it doesn't. The best you can hope for is the fireball will go away just before it connects, right? But the you can still successfully hit the enemy and get blasted in the head with the fireball. So that kind of stuff's really stupid. Really good if you're the Dragon Knight, but really bad if you're the enemy. Not too much else to say, honestly. Just, you know, there's fly gimmicks, which are fun. You have a lot of mobility while you're flying, which is great. Uh, combined with the fact, you know, she has like that really good air fireball is really strong. Uh, just solid enough normals on the ground. And the Dragon allows for all sorts of pressure gimmicks, everything. It can be very scary to take your turn while the dragon's out because as you already saw, you might still get blasted. And that definitely works for the dragon knight. So Swift Master, uh, if you remember that bit at the beginning of the video, how I talked about this game has lots of characters that just wouldn't be allowed in other games. Swift Master is a really good example of that because this character is friggin ridiculous absolutely ridiculous. This is like Rashid Fujin and Gonitz all had a baby together. So let's start with some basic stuff here. Like uh, all of his, you know, basic specials here, which are very big, uh, control a lot of space, have all sorts of fun properties, right? So all of his specials can be done in the air. So a lot of characters have like, you know, an air special, right? Just the one. He gets to do all of his specials in the air, like even his reversal. And like, maybe that'll be nebulously useful, right? But he can do all of his grounded specials in the air as well. That's layer one. Little things like Ford Heavy, just like double Rapukin, but whirlwinds. 
Makes me think of Geese Howard, you know, like, that's kind of fun. Uh, now, speaking of heavy, right? So he has a negative edge feature. So if you hold heavy for a couple seconds here, then let go, then you get this stupid thing. And that is exactly the hitbox you think it is. Uh, it's just shy of full screen. If it's like very literally full screen, it'll just barely miss. But other than that, it just is very fast startup, completely owns the entire horizontal lane. And yes, it wall bounces on top of everything else. And it's also cancelable into your various specials. That's really, really good. Yeah, stuff like back heavy. Back heavy just sucks you in. It controls your movement. You do not get a say in this. Like, here, opponent setting, guard all. So they're blocking everything now, right? Doesn't matter. You're coming here. So he can control your movement. Same deal here. Forward special, the wind orb. Your movement is no longer your own to control. Like, here I am jumping into the screen, and you're still coming in. No matter what, this character owns how you move. You have no say in how you want to move against this stupid character. Other absolutely ridiculous aspects of the character. So back special is a windshield. Like think of it like Virgil or Rose and Street Fighter or whatever. Uh, in that he has like these things that surround him. And of course, naturally, they hit the enemy. But it also basically makes you immune to projectiles. Like nothing hits. So here we are against the ranger, right? And sure enough, there we go. Now, the one weakness, the one weakness this has is as your player's day seeing, like, it's just destroying projectiles, right? But it only destroys projectiles where it's specifically where the tornadoes are. So if it hits above the tornadoes, like, say, just, you know, basic shot here from the ranger, it actually just kind of bops them in the head. So... Any projectile that's above the tornadoes, it will not stop them. Like, say, versus the Crusader. His projectile, it hits the tornado, right? So it gets nullified. But his air projectile, this guy here, since it hits at a higher angle, it can bop the uh, Swift Master right in the head, bypassing tornado, so it works. So this is something you have to explore character to character. Some characters, he's going to absolutely crush the ranged option just by doing this and walking forward. And some characters, it won't matter as much. But yeah, it's very easy and there's very little investment you need to actually do. And by the way, fun little bonus. While these are up, if you do the same motion, <laughs> you do this crazy thing, right? So not on top of just the utility, all these are have hitboxes. They connect, right? They save you from projectiles. And also just giant, absolute crazy screen control move that like goes all the way to the top of the ceiling of the stage. All right, so huge moves, all sorts of just strong stuff. I can control your movement in multiple ways. You have no say in it. Like they even fight against each other, right? Like I can ping pong you between these things. So, you know, have fun just fighting against that. But there's still even more, there's still even more. Like the wind tornado here, right? It gives me new moves if I'm using it. I can like consume it and gain new moves. I can also detonate it using the exact same motion you used to cast it. And that's also a big old wind projectile. Eats up a lot of the screen. Like I ain't going to say any tier list stuff, but all I know is this character is absolutely wild. Like so much of what this character is, is just bananas. The Kunoichi. Now, every fighting game needs its ninja, right? And thankfully for her, she's a pretty good one. Has a lot of the fun archetype uh, gimmicks, too, like teleport and creates a log in its place, right? Also, she's a pretty good, uh, I guess, advocate for the block button because she can very easily, like, left, right mix you, and it's going to be kind of somewhat difficult to tell at times what side she's going to land on. But besides that, so uh, when it comes to range stuff, she's shorter range. Well, short range for this game like in, in any other game like this would be considered a really strong normal right like the range on it and in this game that's eh, only all right can't be a ninja without throwing them shurikens so this is just forward heavy jump heavy as well throw shurikens these are not like projectiles you win the game with these are just quick enough to like frustrate people the damage is very low but just you know to keep people on their toes basically now the main thing is this all of our special moves apply this debuff effect. As you see, it just exploded, right? So it doesn't matter what kind of special move you did, it all applies it, and then the enemy can just kind of 
groove on it because you're going to run forward attack and they can block now the move is blockable just so you know it'll always explode but they can block the explosion but it lets you set up even more pressure thanks to the threat of that explosion now to note uh if you get hit it does go away so don't get hit but otherwise you just, it lets you get more offense on top of the hits you just got but besides that all sorts of good ninja stuff like the fire breath Fire Tornadoes, this is a very strong lockdown move, by the way, because once you start blocking, and as you can see, it goes pretty high up on the screen, right? She can start doing whatever run up, try to do like teleport mix-ups, all that kind of stuff. And perhaps most importantly, she can summon a frog, like this big hell frog. And now here's the, the big bonus, right? All of her magic moves, all of her specials can be held. So here's a regular neutral special. And now if I hold it, She's like opening her chakras, doing some Naruto stuff. And the move is bigger, better, does more damage, and takes less mana, not more, less. So the basic move, 40 mana, right? If I do the held version, about 35 mana. So it's not a lot less, but you're literally getting a better move at a discount. The only thing is, since you have to hold it, it takes more time, theoretically, depending on what's going on, the enemy can like hit you out of it, right? So you have to call your shot, as it were. But like stuff like the flame makes the flame bigger. The frog, if you do the held version of the frog, it just teleports the frog right on top of you. That tornado, you think that looks pretty big there? Wait till you see the held version. Cause now it's getting really big and goes all the way across the screen. So yeah, she's sort of your classic rush down slash mix up, has a lot of fun options to work with and just a lot of pressure. And she hits you with those specials that applies a debuff from which, you know, you gotta worry about the explosion. She can hit you in combo from that as well and just kind of go 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 she's not the character for the most part that's going to try to like play neutral like she has the shurikens like little dagger tosses just to like flit around with every now and then when you got nothing better to do but for the most part she's going in and just trying to run you over the inquisitor so the inquisitor is sort of the edgier side of the crusader the crusader he just wants you to go back to church right and the inquisitor if she's coming for her, she wants you to go to hell so that's why she's got a big battle axe instead of a hammer, right? Very aggressive warrior of the church. Now, the big thing, like, let's just start the show with the showstopper. If you're picking the Inquisitor, this is why you're picking the Inquisitor. The big hell flame torture wheel. This is the defining move of the character. Well, what it is, is this move that eats up the entire screen. The hitbox is exactly as big as it looks. There's no jumping this move, like, there's only jumping into this move. The move is so big, it's so out there. Uh, depending on where you are, even if you try to like dash, you might just dash into it, which also is not gonna help you, right? Uh, it's the Omega Lockdown move. If you get stuck blocking this, you're just in a block stun for a long time, and you're eating a lot of gray health as damage. The lockdown, the pressure, the screen control, this is why you pick this character. Now, it's hardly the only thing the character does, right? The character does quite a bit. You know, it has like a dive kick, all sorts of big axe attacks, lots of flame. The flame's also a very important deal here because we have back heavy. And back heavy basically douses you in like holy oil, right? And any move, when you have the holy oil on you, as you see here, it has like a little debuff effect in the top right. If you have that on you, and then you get hit by any fire move, which, spoiler, every single special move you have that uses magic is a fire move. You will then go into the Inferno state and you basically just take DOT damage over time. Now it's not a lot, but it definitely just gives you more damage than what you did. It's just basically a few ticks of some fairly significant DOT damage. So you really got to watch out for that. And that's just one aspect, right? She can also run backwards while tossing flames as well and applies that effect as well, the DOT, if you have uh, the debuff on. And I don't want to sell the character short, but that's kind of the long and short of it. Just running in, decent normals, lots of big axe swings, uh, very easy to juggle people with. If you want to aim for the debuff stuff and, you know, set that up, that works. And besides that, it's just locking you down behind the wheel and going. If it hits, it hits great. If it's not, you're still in blocks in forever. And they're just going to rush and attack you and just apply more pressure, knock down your defense gauge even lower, gain more mana, just go, 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 go. The life of the Inquisitor is setting up that wheel. 
the Vanguard. Are you a fan of Dynasty Warriors by any chance? Because this dude is like a Dynasty Warriors character, basically. He gets his hits in, and then, uh, you know, he's a true warrior of the Three Kingdoms, like Guan Yu mixed with Lu Bu. So he's kind of a big range boy. Like, how big range? Well, this is like a sweep. So, like, I think I don't need to elaborate too much past that. His range is pretty titanic. Uh, stuff like his heavies, also very big range. Also unique to him. Uh, he can also chain all of his heavies together totally. So, like, neutral heavy goes in the back heavy, he goes in the forward heavy, goes in the down heavy. Like, this is something, for the most part, like, only the striker can do as well. Other characters, you might be lucky to do, like, a heavy into another heavy. Like, you might get two. But he can do all four of his heavies back to back to back in any order you want. Which is really good, because the range is really good, right? Now, neutral special is Brandish. This is a two-hitting move, and this is sort of the party starter. Like, this is where the fun begins. Because he has four, yes, four follow-ups from this. So no matter what, the first part's the same. Say we do neutral special after. He charges forward. Okay. If we do forward special, we have this big thing here. And just absolutely shreds your guard gauge, by the way. Down special. Just a big overhead slam. Back special doesn't seem like too much, but the thing here is kind of like by design out of range, depending on what you do, you can might be able to get like a reversal going on, right? The back follow up here is a fully armored attack. So if you have some sort of like ability, like kind of try to attack him while he's doing this, he'll just blow through it. So all of them have different uses, like stuff like the charge, it's only 10 mana, right? So this is like your low commitment option, mostly safe on block versus like, Forward follow up here takes 30 mana. That's the one that trades your uh, guard gauge. So, depending on what you're doing, like you have options for kind of everything. Or you can just naturally just let it rock and then just keep attacking from there as well, right? So, big buttons, like this is just stand light, obviously, all the other stuff here. So, big buttons, this move that kind of has four unique options as follow ups. And of course, naturally, he does have other specials as well. The one thing to mention is his passive. So when he's in the awakening state, his passive is he does way more guard damage to your guard meter. So before we saw that setup and he did like, I don't know, like about 40, 45% damage to the guard meter. Exact same setup now when the passive is up. That's like 70% of your meter, right? Two of those exchanges in your guard broken and he gets a guaranteed hit. So that's the kind of thing. This character, especially in the awakened state, uh, will penalize you for blocking too much. It's not too big of a deal if you block too much because he will eventually just crack you open. Like, it's not too much of a worry for him. So if you just like some general big range, you know, big bullying with the awakened and breaking people's guards, and if you're just a fan of Dynasty Warriors and the Three Kingdoms, you can imagine this guy to be any guy you want in that regard. This is your dude. The Launcher. So we talked about the Ranger earlier about being a zoning character. And the Launcher is also definitely a zoning character. Here's Stan Heavy. It's a friggin' rocket. And if this is Stan Heavy, well, here's Forward Heavy, which is just a different kind of projectile. Down Heavy is a rocket that goes up. Back Heavy it's a tricky little slide. And then she starts shooting you. Jump Heavy it's like a photon cannon or something. I don't even know what this is. Like... This is before we even get to the special move. So I'm trying to really hit home. Yo, she's all about the projectiles and the ranged game. Like even her reversal. Let's bust out the minigun, right? Neutral special is another like photon laser. Back special shoots up and like creates like this pressure bomb you can follow up from. Forward special, oh my lord, it's like, that's like a super move in any other game. For her, it's just a basic special move. And then, of course, you can call in the cruise missiles. Because why not? Like, even the mediums. This is a flamethrower. Jump medium's a chain gun. Down medium throws grenades. Like, basically, this is your turbo zoner, right? If the ranger's like a more honest, regular zoner, this is the cracked out zoner. Because everything she does is all about projectiles and all sorts of guns, lasers, bombs, missiles, everything. Basically, you already know if this character's for you or not. Because if you like the arsenal of weapons, this is the character. Now, the Lost Warrior. So the Lost Warrior is the unlockable boss of the game. 
And just by looking at him, you probably tell he's a little weird, right? And weird is the name of this character. This dude is all about all sorts of teleport, side switches. Like that was a cross up, by the way. Like you actually had to block that the other side. Uh, like all sorts of weird stuff. Not the least of which he has his own unique mechanic. So you can see here by the enemy Lost Warrior, it says three under their name, right? What happens is you build stacks and you build up to five. And once you build the fifth stack, well, time stops. And you can do whatever you want during this period. So a big part of his game is just doing whatever specialties he's going to be doing. And as long as he can build the five stacks, he again gets a free guaranteed combo on you. This is a character you're going to have to learn to use the block button against. Because holding back the block will not work. Like his basic stand heavy. Just like, here I am. I'm down backing, right? Stand heavy. Cross me up. Cross me up. And of course, depending on the distance, then maybe it's not a cross-up, right? Even though he went behind me, that time it wasn't a cross-up. So between that, the teleports, uh, all like the side switch stuff, because like, once again here, neutral special also crosses up. Like you will have to learn to use the block button here because he will left right you all day and it will be impossible to defend against. And besides that, like his screen control is really good. Like he has a Shin Akuma fireball. He literally throws two projectiles for his jump heavy and stuff like forward heavy, no matter where you are on the screen, it just goes to where you are and immediately hits and side switches you. Now, at least the one weakness, if you want to call it that, is it can hit airborne enemies, but you can't do anything. You can't whiff anything or whatever because he just immediately gets you and hits you. And yes, even though it seems like it's very far away, he absolutely can follow up from it as well. This weird thing too, which is another full screen projectile. Here's a fun fact. It's like wildly plus on block. Look how much faster he jumps compared to me. On top of having all this range and like doing decently respectable damage and adding stacks. And the more stacks, once again, you get the five, you get a free combo because it does a time stop. This character is weird. He'll be wherever he wants on the screen. He teleports everywhere. He lefts rights all the time. Like, he's a weird boy. So if this sounds like your kind of deal, well, then he's definitely the character for it because he does not play like a traditional fighting game character. Ghost Blade. So Ghost Blade is a long range character. His range is in a game full of long range moves, even a bit better than most. He's also pretty wild. Like this is stand heavy. Like you see this wild mess of moves, this looks like a special move, right? But no, it's just a regular button for him. And uh, I guess the big thing here, not the bear lead, is uh, Ghost Blade is in the name because Ghost, he has his own buddy Ghost. And the Ghost is a big part of the game. The Ghost can come in and attack and like you can move independently of him, right? He can do his own thing and then you do your own thing. He can be a very strong projectile from which you can just like cross up and control the screen. He even has a mechanic wherever the ghost is on the screen, he can take his place. So in that scenario here, the ghost was up in the corner, then comes back. And if we time this correctly, then I'm up in the corner and then I can do whatever as well. So not only is just summoning the ghost, pressuring of the ghost, all that just important as part of your game. The fact that you have tricks and gimmicks that you can just be where the ghost is at any given point. Also another character you're gonna have to learn how to use the block button against. Uh, because that's a cross up, right? So if you're just holding like traditional down back, you're going to get blown up because it also has follow ups as well. So just keep in mind that block button automatically blocks left, right? So he can never gimmick you out if you're holding the block button. And speaking of that move right there, back heavy, huge. The hitbox is exactly what it looks like. And that's terrifying, but not as terrifying as fact. There's a spooky ghost face in the sort. Like, look at it. There's a spooky ghost face there. That's crazy. In the end, the name of the game is you just have huge normals. You can do all sorts of good stuff. And the fact that you can just summon your ghost, you can move independently of the ghost. You can both do your own thing. That's the thing. It's a double trouble team. Now we said the ghost blades, a double trouble team. Well, even more so the enchantress. So don't call them Annie and Tibbers, even though it is a little redhead girl with a bear and that's you think that's a very specific genre, but it turns out Enchantress does it too. So before we even get to the part where it's a puppet character, 
and you can control the bear separately from your main character. Let's get to the point where the Enchantress is also a very strong zoner. So stand heavy. Puts out multi-hitting thorns, forward heavy, a big old fireball, and you can also hold it for an even bigger, more damaging fireball. That's pretty nuts, so Back heavy, summons a little buddy, and it goes and attacks you. And you recover pretty quick afterwards, so you can follow up in pressure after the little buddy. Jump heavy is also more like, I'm trying to impress upon you, yo. There's a proper zoner moveset here. Screen control moveset before we even get to the puppet character aspect of the character. And because why not? Puppet character has all the stuff we're gonna get into, all these sorts of fireballs, so you know you need a command grab, right? And the command grab, well, it changes your character. When you are this little weird dummy doll, you can only like do a basic attack and jump. That's it, you lose your entire move set. It doesn't do a lot of damage. You know, spinning pile driver, this is not, but it definitely removes all your options. And also forward and special, when you are just not controlling the bear, is this huge range whip kind of attack, which also steals meter. Look at the enemy's meter, took 40 meter from them. So you can like just drain out the enemy. You can actually force them into the exhausted state with this move against their will. It's really strong. Now that all said, okay, now let's talk the puppet character aspect, right? Just hit neutral special. And now you and the puppet are doing stuff. So your normals are still your normals. That part doesn't change. But now basically any direction and uh, special, the bear will now do its own thing. So it can attack with claws. It has its own like semi projectile as well. That uses a lot of the mana. When you control the bear, it drains mana a little bit. And this move here specifically basically will use the rest of your mana because it's quite strong. Controls a lot of space. You lose your universal reversal, but don't worry because the bear's just gonna go in and crush the enemy, right? Puppet characters always are more complex than any like average archetype, right? So if this is the kind of character you wanna play, you're probably gonna put in some little extra effort for sure, but that kind of effort can be rewarded because these kind of characters are a blast to play. And that is the cast of DNF Duel. So hopefully I've impressed upon you that this is a pretty wild cast. Uh, a lot of these characters are crazy, and a lot of these characters just wouldn't be allowed in other fighting games because they're too strong. Now, thankfully, in DNF Duel, everyone's too strong. Now, of course, time goes on. I'm sure there'll be like a proper defined tier list, and like, I'll just throw that. My early money, my early money is Swift Master's probably top tier, and like, Grappler's probably low tier, right? Who knows? I'd love to be wrong and be the opposite. But yeah, these characters, even someone low tier, maybe, like the Grappler, like he's still nuts by Grappler standards, let alone everyone in every other archetype. It's just a plain, fun, and enjoyable cast to play. And that said, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have now a more informed opinion on how a lot of the characters work, and maybe you will understand who now you'll pick for DNF Duel. That said, now we are at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well, and go out and play some DNF Duel.